excited na ba kayong may matutunan ngayong araw na to? Please keep on watching. I never made it But I know what it takes I'm motivated By a mix of emotion Got my statement Hi kiddos, it's me, Mom Shellen I'm your calculus teacher for this whole semester and this is a pre-recorded video of the discussion on tonics. Let's begin without further ado. So if we have a synchronous class, of course, I'll be checking your attendance. And then you would, you would be required to log into your orange apps because you would be answering some questions in your orange apps. And then, of course, a recitation uh, from your responses. These are what I want to know. I want to know how you feel about the subject in calculus. I would also would like to know what your initial thoughts are on the subject. Because most of the time, a lot of students would think that calculus is very difficult. Your parents or your friends in college might say, Hey, calculus yan! and give you those scary thoughts well i hope to turn those around so our lesson is on coordinate geometry coordinate geometry is a different branch of mathematics and it is um an, anal an analysis of geometric figures where they are viewed in relation to their properties in the rectangular coordinate plane this is also called analytic geometry because you are analyzing in terms of x and y. What am I saying? Back in your junior high school, whenever you talk about geometry, you were you are thinking of uh, either a flat plane figure, say a square, a rectangle, or a triangle, and then you would be looking for the perimeter or the area. Or if it's 3D, say you have a cylinder or a cube or a cone, and then you would be looking for the volume of that. But now, in coordinate geometry or analytic geometry, we would be studying those figures as if they are superimposed in a rectangular coordinate plane. Moreover, in this approach, we would be talking about the specific uh, figures in terms of their applicability in actual scenarios. So one of the problems that we encounter in mathematics is um, you don't have the interest to learn it because sometimes you're thinking, where am I going to use this in real life? How would I apply this lesson? It's very abstract. Well, yon ang sasagutin natin dito sa coordinate geometry. So keep on learning. At the end of uh, the first mid-grading, mid-quarter, this is the essential question that I want you to answer. How can various real-life situations involving transformation of various path or trajectory of an object be solved and analyzed? Again, this is the question that I want you to be able to answer at the end of the first mid-quarter, at the end of our discussion for the next three weeks. So, Let's begin with conics. How did the study of conics begin? Let's see who's behind this mathematical discovery. A brief history. This guy here, this is Apollonius of Perga. He is one of the most notable mathematicians. He's even dubbed as the great geometer. Why is he great? Well, he was able to write an eight-volume work, which is entitled Conics. And out of those eight volumes of work, we will just be tackling about uh, the basics, the, the foundation of what he was able to uh, write about. And then we would incorporate that with modern mathematics. So from what Apollonius of Perga did, we are able to define a conic section. So a conic section, or simply conics, conics in plural, conic singular, is the intersection of a plane and a double napped cone. So uh, when we say, I'm sorry for that, um, imagine that we have a double napped cone. Nap is the actual 
ikaw, uh, say you're eating an ice cream, then um, yung apa mismo, the, that part itself is called the nap. So, when you have a double nap cone, it's up and down, as you can see in the figure. And then, a conic section is formed when a plane, that transparent moving figure, intersects the double napped cone. That's why it's just a conic section. It's just part of that complete figure. We are able to come up with different figures denoted by the line on the right side. So, again, a conic section, or simply conic is the intersection of a plane and a double napped cone um by the way you don't have to fill in the blanks of your modules because you don't have the recorded uh, the print out yet so it's fine i want you to observe the groups of images carefully here and then notice where the figures intersect okay so this is the first group we have the first group here the four figures there Look at where the double nap cone and that plane intersects. And then this is the second group down here. Um, I want you to observe where that plane passes through. So in the formation of the four basic conics, uh, the intersecting plane does not pass through the vertex of a cone. Uh, that's for the first group a while ago. If you would notice, it doesn't pass through the vertex. The vertex is where uh, the vertex is where your two naps meet. So let's say, uh huh. Let's say you have these cones. Oh, it's a bit blurred. So you have these cones. So you could, uh, let's imagine that you could see clearly. Ayan. Thank you so much, camera, for, um, yeah. So this would be where the two planes, uh, the, the two cones intersect, and this is called the vertex. Okay? So, looking at the four basic cone exceptions, the intersecting plane does not pass through the vertex of the cone. It doesn't pass through here. See? See? See there? Okay? Now, for the second group, for the second group, the plane actually passes through the vertex. And uh, these kinds of conics are called degenerate conics because you can see for the point, it passes through exactly at the vertex when you come up with a line it passes again through the edges of your cones but still cuts through your vertex and then for the double line or the intersecting lines it passes through both or two sides of your cones actually they're called degenerate conic because this portion of the the nap is also called the generator. Generator. So, knowing that it doesn't cut through this, it doesn't cut through the apa, it's a degenerate conic. Okay? Again, the difference is when you have the four basic conics, it does not pass through the vertex. When you have the degenerate conics, it passes through the vertex so the four conics as we've enumerated a while ago we have the circle parabola ellipse and the hyperbola again the four conics okay say you were able to repeat them they are circle parabola ellipse and hyperbola very good we can do this okay so let's see some applications. This image here is the Aldar headquarters. This is located in Abu Dhabi, which is made of two circular convex shaped facades. That's pronounced as facade. So it's an application of a circle. One of the applications that is um, well known, uh, a well known structure. Oh, this one is familiar. For those who usually travel going to 
the north without passing through uh, NLEX or TPLEX. This is not very far from home. This is actually Bamban Bridge. It's a parabolic structure which was constructed as part of the disaster restoration when the Pinatubo erupted in 1991. So this is part of the National Highway. Ever wondered why uh, the planes have elliptical or sometimes uh, rounded windows? So that shape is utilized because of certain situations or certain accidents back in the 1900s. I think that's around 1950s or something when the planes had rectangular or square windows. So there were two major collisions of uh, different airplanes and then when they investigated the cause why those accidents happened it actually boiled down to the shape of the windows so why did they choose to use ellipse you would learn that as the weeks go by lastly hyperbola so these are hyperbolic cooling towers these are found in india and are used in creating natural or renewable resources if you would also notice a lot of cooling towers actually follow hyperbolic shapes why is that keep on learning to be able to know the special characteristics of these conic sections so math galing portion of your um of your modules what conic figures can you observe at home i want you to take pictures take photos and share your observations in your orange apps discussions again you don't have to go outside i just want you to observe at home what conic figures would you be able to find there i'm actually looking for one right now and oh <clears throat> okay i got this this is a circle this is actually where I place my mints. Ta da! Mm. Fresh. Okay, so I want you to look at what you would be able to find at your home, okay? Uh, this is uh, the instruction for compilation of lesson one. Look, I cannot speak properly anymore because of this. <laughs> anyway, compilation for lesson one. Kindly dedicate some several pages of activity sheets. And then I want you to indicate the following details, just like if you have your activity sheets. Say you don't have them with you, you could also use long bond paper or any clean sheet, as long as they have all the same sizes, okay? So, kindly dedicate some several pages. This would serve as your compilation for all of the formative assessments. Why are they important? Formative assessments are where we take your plus points at the end of the quarter. Especially in my subject, I don't usually give um, plus points to all of the students if they did not work hard for it. So this is where I will get them. Hindi po ako naghuhula ng grades. Kung ano po ang ibibigay ninyo, siya lamang ang ire-record ko. Maliwanag ba? So, remember that you're allowed to maximize the space, of course. Eco-friendly, you could write at the back of the paper. Whenever we have a formative assessment, you would also upload this in one of your LMS. So just wait for the instructions kung sa Aralinks ba, sa Canvas ba, o sa Orange Apps. Although, usually sa Aralinks po tayo mag-work kadating sa mga ganito. So whatever you would write in your compilation, you would also upload in your Aralinks so that I would be able to check them. Okay, so this is the information that you would put there. Can you, you're allowed to take a screenshot of this in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Alright. So, what I've discussed in this video are just some of the applications of your lessons in Konix. And if you'll notice, there are actually a lot of applications. Hindi lang itong mga binigay ko yung um, mga pwedeng paggamitan. It's not limited to these examples. But then again, what makes Konix so useful? Please stay tuned for the next video where we would begin our discussion on the first Konix section, which is circle. Till then, bye-bye.
bye 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 bye. I hope you learned something today. Thank you.